Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling, Hurt Retrospective, The Consummation, the second album in our retrospective series. Um, so yes, this would have come out last week, but stuff kept happening. Lots of stuff. Yeah, it was a bit of a chaotic week. Um, but yeah, initial thoughts on the album. Uh, of the albums we've listened to, we've Whilst we haven't listened through all of the discography, we've both listened to more than just the two albums we've covered thus far. Or will be after this episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, of the albums we've listened to, this is... I wouldn't say it's the weakest, but it is weaker than the first one. Yeah, it's kind of... It tries to vary itself, but doesn't quite pull it off. Like, mm. The first album has a certain... It had different styles, but a certain kind of feel and structure to it. Mm. Which... We seem you know, varied, but also kind of as a collective piece. In this yeah. case, it kind of varies a bit too much and doesn't particularly pull off on the stuff it's trying to do that well. So yeah, once it gets to the middling point, it suddenly switches up quite dramatically. Yeah, in some cases, the switch up actually makes it better, but on the other hand, there's also a few songs that were just are considerably weaker than others. Mm. So um, I would say this is probably the album that cemented them as a new metal band. Mm, the first half of the album especially is very very obviously yeah. inspired by or inspired new metal bands that are around at the same era mm. so. yeah and sort of like see the taproot disturbed bands like that you can definitely hear have an influence mm. so yeah starting off House of Cards yep it's new metal <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't quite, you know, it doesn't even try and hide it, but it's got that kind of chunky riffs you just fit from new metal bands. Mm-hmm. The lyrics just don't seem as mature as the first album. Yeah. The first verse is, Could I trouble you? Don't you know who you are? Since it came unglued, I fell and picked up all the parts. I seem to come together. It's when we come apart and made that fake connection. I fell down with my house of... Ellipses. <laughs> Yeah, I always get bugged when bands do that and sort of have a line that just ends in ellipses. Yeah, it's kind of case of sometimes you can kind of see the effect, other times it just sounds kind of awkward. Yeah. This is not a particularly good example of it. It, it, it feels like an incomplete thought. Hmm. Um, it's definitely, an, as Pierce said, it's definitely a new metal album. Song. A song, even. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a new metal album, I guess. Well, yeah. uh, this is a the best possibly the best or second best example on the album of it being uh, the relatively what you'd expect from new metal yeah it sounds like that yeah um i'd say it's one of the better songs on the album uh, musically it's, musically yeah i mean it is lyrically it's lyrically it's a mess you know, yeah like, i don't particularly care about lyrics i mean not being that person not kind of that kind of guy that really cares that much about lyrics but mm. sometimes things like this happen and it's kind of They're, it doesn't seem mature they feel a bit stilted yeah, I mean, it's kind of gone from the first album, which, you know, actually focused on a lot of you know, actual proper influences and subjects. Mm. And this just sounds more like someone who's, you know, being a teenager writing in a notebook. Mm. Which is kind of ironic, because at this point he would have been, like, three years older mm. than he was when he wrote the first album. Well, according to Wikipedia, that means he's about five. So. <laughs> No, that wasn't Wikipedia. Was that was some... Because on Wikipedia, it said that he started when he was 15, and the first album came out when he was 17. Yeah. It was that other website that suggested that he he was uh, he was younger than us, and it's sort of like, yeah, that's not possible, because <laughs> he would have been eight when the band started. <laughs> You're not saying Charles Porter is, no? Yeah, but there's child prodigies and then there's touring. <laughs> you say you would not want to see a metal band just fronted by an eight year old? Isn't that baby metal? <laughs> so, like, even they were older. <laughs> and there was, was there was like recent announcement of a Chinese idol group where the average age was about six. That's what? Fucking weird. <laughs> you remember hearing about that? I was like, you what, mate? <laughs> These people even these kids wouldn't even know what they are. They're just like, why are we on stage? Why mm. are we performing? What are these people here for? Why are they looking at us? Uh, well, at least it's not as bad as those weird ass beauty pageants that you get in America. Yeah, Try to beauty pageants to get the crap out of me. Yeah. It's like a perfect example just to attract the most messed up people in the world. Yeah. It's just thankfully we're not in America right now because just even being in the same country as that kind of thing would creep me out. Yeah. Um. They probably are over here. <laughs> 
But enough of that tangent. <laughs> Nothing to do with what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it does lyrically feel a lot more new metally. It's sort of like both musically and lyrically, this is much more what you'd expect from a new metal song. Very much so. I mean, as I said, people labelled her as a new metal band, and if they listen to this album, straight away they would think, yeah, this is new metal. Mm. I definitely say it's not the first album you want to have heard from Hertz, and this isn't the first song you would have wanted to hear from them. Yeah, I've had a problem with bands before, I've heard a certain song and just dismissed it as not being that good and not worth checking out, just mm. because it happens to be different to a lot of other stuff. Yeah. I went, checked out a different album, I was like, this is really good. It wasn't the thing I had first, wasn't. So. Yeah, I mean, I've had that problem with bands like Alice in Chains. Yeah, that just happened occasionally. Mm. Anyway, as I said, it, there's not really much to this song. It does seem very uh, uninspired, possibly. Yeah. The thing is, what time did the album come out? Actually, uh, 2003. So it would have been after a lot of the other kind of new metal bands around. It yeah. would have kind of just felt, well, the same as everything else. Because mm. <laughs> do you think, oh, well, there's only like a 500 other bands at this time that are doing the same thing. Yeah, I mean, the new metal genre kind of went from 97 to about 2006. Probably around that, yeah. yeah. So it's pretty much right in the middle of the huge new metal boom, and yeah. it just doesn't do anything in this single to make it stand out from anything else. Yeah, which, of course, if you're a band that's only on their second album, that's going to be a problem. Especially if you're starting out with it as the first song on the album. Yeah. Um, so let's go to the next song. Unclean. Yeah. Which is also very new metal, but I think is definitely an improvement on a lot of Yeah, it's a much stronger one, both lyrically and musically. Hmm. So, once again, it just seems like the first song they kind of put on there, you know how these albums quite often have weak songs? Yeah. Probably they kind of started out with one of those. Yeah. I've had this album before, I mean, whatever the thing is. I mean, actually, not even related to metal, but Pendulum's Intelico, for example. Mm. The first song on that album just doesn't sound very good. <laughs> Yeah. The rest of them sounds much better, but you hear that as the first thing, you're thinking, oh god, this is not going to be very good. Mm. This doesn't sound like what I expect, this doesn't sound like anything I particularly care for. But most albums don't generally do it, but when they do, you're kind of thinking, oh god, this is, if I actually doesn't know, if, say if you bought the album, you're like, did I just waste my money buying anything? Because this first song is terrible. Of course, if it's anything by Limp Biscuit, then you'll find like one or two songs at best that are actually decent. Yeah, I've bought albums before, I think I've heard a song, but oh, this is a really good song, I'm going to buy the album. It's actually the only song on the album that's even worth listening to. Yeah. It's disappointing. Yeah, it's like, going back to our old wheelhouse of St. Anger bashing, there's like one song on that that is in any way decent, and then the rest can just burn! No doubt, I don't know which song you're talking about exactly, but Trans Side probably has the same song repeated twice in a row, because most of the songs on the album are like. Mm. It's, it's artificial extending in that, at its worst. Mm-hmm. Artificial extension of songs at its worst. So yeah. yeah, I mean, you you just think it's fine having an instrumental fade out. I've got no problem. I mean, one of the songs we'll be talking about in a minute does have that, and it works fine for it. Yeah, I mean, I think about you know likes post metal and post rock, which you know, has that kind of thing in spades. Yeah, but if it's done well, it works. So it's also the kind of thing you can quite easily not do well. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's the distinction between just having a long song and artificially lengthening it. Mm. But I think, as I said, anger, the case of a lot of the artificial extension is the fact that it just repeats itself. Yeah. It doesn't do anything new, it doesn't vary, it usually is the same bit just played like two or three times in a row. Yeah, like... Exactly the same. Yeah. Maybe with a little refrain in the middle. Yeah, like, which song is it that just ends with Hetfield repeatedly saying kill? Oh, I don't know. I haven't had the album in probably not long enough. But, <laughs> but anyway, back to what we were actually talking yeah. about. Yeah. Hurt. Yeah. Um, do, yeah, you knew we have to do our same anger bash, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, it's a nickelback as well, because we need to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> we have a bingo sheet for this now. <laughs> we get bingo every week. <laughs> um, but anyway, this feels like a much more mature song. It does. I mean, you'll always have my love, even though you loved with nothing because I was dumb enough to let you slip right through. You touched and you moved me. You don't care about me. I feel so, so dirty. Don't touch me. I'm unclean again. It does. It makes more... It doesn't seem as, you know, whiny as the first song does. Yeah. It feels much more like an introspective look at how, generally speaking, relationships can make you feel. I mean, it's... I don't know if this song does remind me 
quite a bit of some of the lyrics in the first album, which is definitely a good thing. Yeah. So, I wonder whether the House of Cards might have been a single release or something, yeah, to make it a bit more mainstream kind of style. Quite, surprise me. quite possibly. I mean, although Consummation in, in general had a limited release, so it's hard mm. to say. I mean... We always had attempt at trying to, you know, reach a more mainstream audience. Yeah. I mean, when I say it had a limited release, I mean 2,000 copies. Well, it is limited, yeah. I mean, okay, I suppose they're a small band that's trying to probably have a relatively small fan base. Yeah. But I suppose I mean, that's why they released a recon situation. Well, it's also the reason they re-released their self-titled album, because initially that only had a 1,000 copies released. Mm. Well, I've seen bands do that before. Kind of the, the first stuff they released, it's like, oh, well, it's not going to be that many people know us at this time. Mm. We sell them at the shows, people can buy them at the shows. Yeah. People know about us, they come to the shows, and then we can sell them there. Mm. Don't need to worry about you know, paying labels or whatever, put them in a shop or anything. Yeah. The thing is, this is one of those songs that I can relate to because it, my last relationship, um, certain aspects of this, it kind of felt like. So, but I will hold a grudge for the ones that left me broken hearted when I was stupid enough that I believed in you. Yep, that sounds like the last relationship, alright. Yeah. <laughs> he saw a lot of what was going on, so. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't that much fun when I was with her, but none the more for that. Well, she's out of the way forever. Maybe. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, she's still living in Southampton, so. All possibility of bumping into her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one of that's why every so often when we're in Southampton, you might notice me looking a bit. Tricky. Yeah. It's sort of like, please don't tell me we're going to bump into her. Please don't <laughs> tell me we're going to bump into her. But none the more for that. A bit of insight into my cr the less pleasant side of my life. <laughs> this is part of the reason why I decided Hurt was a good band to cover because it's very easy for me to relate to a lot of their songs. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Mm. So you can relate to a song if you <clears> like it. Yeah. Not well, necessarily, I mean, you can probably relate to some crappy stuff, but. Oh, and how? Well, in some respects, I can relate to Hot and Cold by Katy Perry. I hate that song, but I also really like it! <laughs> I hate myself! For liking that song! <laughs> well, hey. You know what I'm saying? is totally your favourite artist ever made. <laughs> the b beautiful, perfect perfection that is her entire discography. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I can't get enough of that raw. Sure, master crafted musical periphery. <laughs> periphery? What was I thinking of? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> Profile, you mean? Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> periphery is something on the edge of your sight. We tangented, but you were not expecting this to happen. It happens all the time. I know, but it's sort of like what did, what just happened here? What well, Katy is music related. Yeah. How you got to this from her? I'm not quite sure. But, <laughs> oh well. I don't know. Anyway, um, back to hurt. <laughs> Although listening to Katy Perry does make you hurt, especially if you have to listen to it every day on the hour. Every hour at work for four months. Jesus, that's suffering. We should have music you know the artist names of, but stuff we have is completely unknown yeah. and garbage. Anyway, oh, and also it's just one particular song of hers. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to roll to get back on plot. <laughs> I fell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it depends. Were you using a percentile system or a d20 system? If it was in percentile, why would it only roll one? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back on plot. Uh, yeah. What topic? For more appropriate word, really. Yeah. Whatever. We lost the plot long ago. Lost the plot far before starting this, that's for sure. Mm. I mean, you go through this song, and it does have the feel of someone who kind of feels like they've been made to feel. Be manipulated. Yeah, feel manipulated and basically feel like a piece of shit. Yeah, you know, this person treated me like shit this entire time, I didn't realise it and now I do. Well, get the fuck out of it, pretty much. Mm. <laughs> like my last relationship. I mean, there's a pause to drink while I was saying that. <laughs> this is drink. See, the listener doesn't even know what you're drinking. You could be drinking straight you know, moonshine or something. <laughs> no, the moonshine's over there. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> In a big oasis bottle of all things. <laughs> Going three. Yep. Continue. Yeah. Shall we go on to the next song? Mm, it is legit. Yeah. The first few songs are kind of flow into each other, so it's a bit difficult to talk about just one of them without going to the next. It's all very similar in style. Mm. Uh, loaded. 
That spelling always weirds me out. Yeah. I can't think of any context in which you just have the O and wouldn't have the A. If anyone knows of a specific reason why you'd spell it that way, please say, because I I know nothing in this situation. The thing I think of is like, you know, Lude Stones or something, but that's obviously not going to have any relation to the song. Possibly. <laughs> it's hard to say with Hurt. Hmm. Yeah, the obtuse lyrics. Hmm. Well, it must be the lyrics in this album seem to be less obtuse than the last album. Yeah. Well, some of the last album's ones is sort of like, Huh? 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 Eh? Like denim. Yeah, what the hell's going on there? Uh, all depending on the future of a conflict, your open-minded muscles never wanted anyone who could deliver such a blow into the system. Part of you thinks it's over now, but part of you knows that you're no quitter. You've got yours and I got mine. You've got yours and I've got mine. You've bought yours and I've got time. You lost yours and you want mine now. Drugs. Is that what you reckon it's about? Quite, well, I think it looks like it's like drugs, at least on the face level. Mm. But it might be something else underneath. Uh, Probably have a song that makes it sound like it's about one thing, but it's actually about something else. Mm. So. Then you start to ask me why it's an offer that I mind, and you start to ask me twice as you say your memory's fine, and it's something I should try, but you should try to live your life while the days are passing by. We think more is actually you know about him losing someone to addiction. Mm. It is about the drug. Yeah, well, the immediate next verse it does feel a bit like it's directly about drugs because it says. You want me to get high with you. You want me to get loaded. You want me to get by with you. You want me to get loaded. Yeah, I think it must be about that kind of thing. Where someone you know knows someone who decided to take the path of drugs and they've just completely lost their entire yeah. existence. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that's a that's a fair estimation. I mean, let's say, well, they're they're Virginian, not uh, Californian or San Franciscan, as was suggested last time. And Virginia is a bit of a, you know, moonshiny place and, you know, I'm not sure about the drug scene there, but... Um, I don't really know that much about Virginia, uh, I just know the song West Virginia. I don't think it really has that much of a you know, good outlook on Virginia. Yeah. It doesn't really explain much about what it is as a place. Mm. I don't know from Virginia either. No. There's people in America, but no one from Virginia, so... Yeah. No, I can't. I don't know anyone. I know people from New York, Chicago, basically all the, well, yeah, basically those sorts of places. Those sorts of places are always good to have. It's places that happen to have buildings for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, basically sort of the more northern states, that sort of thing. Whereas Virginia is dirty south. Yeah, that's right. Dirty south. Dirty. Um, yeah, it does feel like it's probably talking about sort of addiction and um, sort of resistance against someone tr pushing drugs on the person. The question is, is it about you know, personal experience with someone or is it you know, just, just lyrics? I mean, knowing what his first album was like, it wouldn't suppose it actually is based around some kind of thriller event. Yeah, because a lot of the songs from the last album felt like they were very personally involved. And this does, again, this does feel personally involved. It doesn't feel like it's just generally talking. It it kind of it kind of has the feel of Into the Fire by Disturbed in that respect. Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah, get a connection. Mm. For the benefit of people who don't know, Into the Fire was actually inspired by... Was it his girlfriend? Or? I think it was girlfriend, yeah. Yeah. Um, David Draymond came home and found that his girlfriend had hung herself. Well, I think it was, yeah. yeah. And basically, it's kind of a... It's it's essentially um, his suicide support uh, song. Yeah, it's because if, basically he was about, yeah, people, even if they have to go through fire, will be standing beside you or whatever. Yeah. They don't have to fire the top. Yeah. I mean, the video for the song actually opens with him directly talking, basically saying, if you're feeling uh, suicidal, then con please contact these numbers. Mm. So you know what it's like for it to happen. Mm. So it's pretty much personal piece. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it does 
have that sort of feel. Uh, again, if anyone knows anything about it, I welcome comments, because I want to know as much as possible to understand where this band is coming from, because it's important to understand where bands like this are coming from to see how how much of what they're saying is actually important lyrics. Hmm. This is like a kind of band which it quite possibly is on quite a few levels. Yeah. So. Uh, next song? Yeah. Et al. This song is makes me think really, really strongly of Siva. Yeah. Especially kind of Funny Between New Spaces kind of era. Hmm. So. Okay, I really like that album, so. Hmm. Actually, really quite like that song. This is. I do wonder about the lyrics in this. Feel, damn you, feel like you're alive again. Take ten broken limbs and make it all right for them. And I needed you more, more than you'll ever notice. But I need to do more if you're to ever know this. I'm trying to think about how many different levels I could be taken on. Yeah. This, this is where the lyrics get oblique again. Hmm. This is like it's, there's something... The okay, question is, is it talking about himself or about someone else? I can't quite tell. Yeah. I mean, I can relate to that sort of feeling because it, when you've got depression, it's very difficult for you to feel anything at certain times. I, it, think, I think it may well be talking, you know, to himself as I'm just saying, why can I, why can I not feel like I need to at this moment? Why yeah. is everything the emptiness? Yeah. We were talking about it in the last episode as well about you know, the possibility of him actually having depression. Mm. This song tends to further iterate the possibility of that. Yeah. Um, the next verse is saying, Dance, puppet boy, if you do a good job, then they'll want you again. Give it all you that you've got. Show them the joy and the pain and the ending. Then do it again and you'll all stop pretending. They'll pay more attention to what's before mentioned. As you, you bob your head because you're not even listening, a very few... Ah. Uh, a very f small few of you even give meanings, but laugh, clown boy, laugh, because it's always so pleasing. It does sound like the sort of attitude that would come from someone with depression, because you often feel like you're under pressure to perform in a particular way, like you've got to show that you're happy, that everything's okay. It was very much kind of like that to me as mm. well. I mean, it kind of seems like yeah, he's trying to push himself to be accepted as a regular person, but his own mental illness is kind of getting in the way of that. And he can't. He doesn't think at any point he's actually managing to do what he needs to do. Yeah. Even if he's actually doing it, he still doesn't. He's in his mind, he isn't doing enough. Mm. Of course, it could be completely wrong. It's actually about someone else. But I don't know, that's the way it comes across to me anyway. Mm. I mean, it does. A lot of the songs on this album feel like they would have worked perfectly fine on the previous album mm. in terms of actual context. Stylistically, I think they are very separate from the previous album. Yeah. There's a couple of ones that probably would fit stylistically. Most of them aren't quite separate. Yeah. I am kind of curious about the choice of the title, Et al. Because mm. that means, and everything. Which in itself does kind of suit the song, right? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what to make of that, really. Um, yeah, it's a very curious song. Um, just going through the lyrics, um, I met a woman, she was wonderful, everything perfect, we both had the world, but I filled up my senses with thoughts from the ghost, and I spent her life savings, left no room for both of us. Crying and trying and screaming aloud, I barely can see her tumultuous crowds. Are careful to hide her and sing much too loud. See, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think that still may be clinging on the same kind of thing of, yeah, he met someone, but he just believed he couldn't do enough for her. Yeah. And he kind of self destructed. Mm. He took away everything because, you know, he couldn't keep himself in the state he wanted to be in. Mm. Kind of caused the, just this. The end of the list, simply because he didn't believe in himself enough to be able to, be able to provide what he needed to. Yeah. You know, it's feeling as if he was just leeching off her. Yeah. Which is what does often happen. Um, relationships will end because people with depression will just think, I can't, I'm not the person who can make my significant other happy. I should just leave them so that they can find someone who will. This is an attitude that you frequently come across. Um, it seems to be a bit of a 50-50 of how relationships with depressed people will end. Yeah, I think it's depression affects people in different ways, really. Mm. 
Yeah, but I actually really quite like this song. So, I mean, okay, it's still got like kind of new metal feel to it, but it's a good example of it. Yeah, I think this is where we get into the both lyrically and musically. It's one of the strongest songs yeah. on the album. Uh, the first kind of initial batch of four kind of new metal star songs it is probably my favourite of the four. Yeah. And then it changes. Yeah. Then we get to still. I was saying to you earlier, still immediately puts me in mind of Anathema. It does, it has very much an Anathema kind of feel to that. Yeah. Uh, we've been trying to figure out what exact era of Anathema, but we can say it reminds us of Anathema. Um, curiously enough, and this is quite funny because last week us saying we don't think they're German. <laughs> <laughs> and, German. Yeah, the whole song is in German, and I would read out. Oh, and it, we've got a translation, <laughs> so I would try reading out the German lyrics. But sometimes my pronunciation with German is a bit. Off. Yeah, <laughs> some words I can pronounce. Other words, it's sort of like no, you need to be harder or softer with this particular word. I still to this day have difficulty with small words like ich. Or ish. I'm never quite sure how ICH is pronounced. It's ich, I'm not sure. I dated a German for ten months and I still have no fucking clue. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh. Yeah, but the clear thing is, is the song is not happy. Yeah. Uh, a music as beautiful and blue as her eyes, full of pain in his beliefs, came from this small room that meant the world to him, being his escape from reality. It's looking at his lyrics, it makes me think she had a lot of anathema kind of stuff. Like yeah. It. It's kind of a case of, from what I can tell, it seems to be about, you know, someone who had someone they loved that they lost. Mm. And, you know, he just can't deal with the fact that she's gone. Mm. Which, once again, is very similar to anathema's kind of stuff. Yeah. I think kind of more, as I said, we, we did discuss this earlier, but I think kind of alternative four kind of era anathema is probably the most fitting, both musically and lyrically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's got this interesting style where the lyrics aren't fully sung, they're more whispered. I mean, the one thing it does remind me of lyrically, well, not lyrically, but vocally, is, um... Oh, what song is it by Anathema? I think it's... Balance, maybe? Possibly. Way closer. Like, well, closer's got the kind of vocal effect on it. Yeah. It's one of those two, anyway, on A Natural Disaster that made me think of that. Mm. Kind of the vocals constantly in the background. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's... It's a very interesting song, and it does give you this very haunted feeling. Hmm. Even if you... Even exactly in German, you can still kind of get the kind of feel behind it. Yeah. Well, to be fair, there are a lot of German words that match up. Mm. The question is, though, is it, is it actually the singer singing the German, or is it sampled, or, or just having a guess for it? I wouldn't like to say. It would be interesting if it was the lead singer. I mean, as you can see, music is a direct word from German. Yeah. So. As is sand. Of course, the great thing is that music is just it's a universal language in itself. Mm. So, you know, it's in German, you can still you know, get the kind of same emotions you could get even if you don't understand the natural lyrics. Mm. If it's done well, then you don't necessarily need to understand the actual words to understand what they're getting at. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's, I'm trying to think. It's the second shortest song on the album. The one's definitely into lyrics, anyway. So. Yeah. It's not got the kind of ambient, melancholy feel you get from Will Open Up and stuff as well. Mm. It's pretty much, as I said, it's a sort of moment where the album seems to go from being regular new metal to kind of being more experimental. Yeah. There's a lot of the next songs all shifting around genre wise. Yeah. I mean, this is very much more of a. Well, it's not metal at all, really. It's more kind of depressive rock, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's, a very, it's one of the ones that's very hard to pin down. Mm. It's good. Like, actually, it, really quite good. Yeah. Um. I'm just checking. Uh, um, yeah, there's not much to say aside from what we've already said. So. Next song, Alone with the Sea. And we've been taunting about talking about this song for quite some time now, so... Yeah, well, go on ahead. Yeah. It's, it's your song. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, now this is my personal favourite, not just on the album, but of everything that I've listened to of Hurts. Now there's a caveat to that. This version of the song is not my favourite version of it. Now we'll be covering that when we get to talking about volume two, but I still absolutely love this song. And it's a much more... It's hard to explain. It's... I mean, the lyrics feel much more... Poetic? 
well, much more poetic and much more vastly. The perspective is much more vast. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it's all just about the singer or the band or one particular person. It's very much kind of telling a story in its own way. Yeah, I mean, the opening lines Once there was an old ocean where anyone who saw it grew old with the sea, and we were terrified of water and of all the sons and daughters no one dared to see. On the banks of the coastline, I tracked a bleeding loved one whose blood was mingling in the saltiest of waters, because apparently they faltered, never again to be seen. So I try, I cry, I try, and I scry. It's a very interesting set. I mean, as I said, the other ones seem very personal about like relationships or whatever. This thing seems to be... I don't, I don't mean, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not one. Yeah. I do really like it. I think when, if you look at lyrics on their own, you wouldn't necessarily... If you look at them on the, you know, completely separate from the band, mm. you wouldn't necessarily think they're even lyrics. It could well be you know, an actual poem. Yeah. I mean, it's got the kind of running theme of someone who's letting someone else down, it seems. Mm. I mean, there are odd bits where he does use the me pronoun, but those feel much more like he's using me to talk as if he's a character in a story. It does seem very much as if though he is being told a tale by uh, some kind of old veteran who's been around for years. Mm. Oh, this is what happened back in my day. Yeah. But he, the, there's somewhere else, a, th- a kind of third perspective thing going on there, because someone else is telling him this story about what happened. Mm. And he's just taking it in. Yeah. I... I I kind of get a bit of a rhyme of the ancient mariner. Feel. I was thinking that, yeah. Was it, which that's what we're in the poem kind of thing. Yeah. Think of that. Um, because it must be the sea kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also things like the whole growing alone with the sea. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it's got the same kind of feeling, even though someone went out on a sail and it should be fine, and, it's like, and some kind of tragedy happened. Mm. So he's been told by someone who's like the only survivor of a shipwreck or something. Yeah. It's. The thing is, it doesn't necessarily even have to be actually about the sea. It could well be a metaphor or something. Yeah. For the person who I don't know. To be frank, I don't much care. <laughs> no, it's, just, it's a good song in its own right. Yeah, and it's one of those songs that you could dissect every lyric and try to examine it, and you'd still be going, "Is this right?" <laughs> yeah, you'd still be questioning every suggestion that you make. I think it's probably one of those songs that's written in that kind of way intentionally to you know, people talking about it. Yeah. But they did a good job of it. I mean, because uh, song, songs do that, they kind of make obtuse lyrics for sheer sake of getting people's attention. Mm. Other songs, you know, they just do that and, you know, apply it to a song that's already really interesting. Yeah. I think what also makes it work really well is the music does emulate this feeling of a ship and a crew and it's just got, like, being a, by the sea. and Weavy kind of effect yeah. to the music itself. What's the thing about the foghorn? Yeah. You know, that foghorn sound... It's appropriate and it works as uh, well as an introduction. Mm. It sets the scene. Yeah. I mean, you've got bells, sort of clanging of bells, sort of nautical ones, and. It's very much, you know, focused around the idea of it being a, an ocean tale. Yeah. And uh, it makes a good effect. I mean, unlike a lot of the other sounds, kind of heavy rips or whatever, it's more kind of ambient. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of creating a soundscape to mm. go along with the uh, lyrics, kind of creating a mental image. Yeah. So, as long as you can hear this lie down in a dark room and just focus on it you're going to get lost in the natural kind of what's going on which I've done a fair few times I do it quite a few songs because certain songs just have kind of they evoke that feeling of wanting to you know, just drop into it and just stay there and imagine what's going on what's actually going on mm. yeah I, I will admit we are rushing through these songs a bit but it's mainly because I'm trying to keep things a bit more focused yeah so that you're not having to sit through an hour each episode Richard was just talking about things that Irrelevant. Yeah. Well, even with cutting that out, it ended up over an hour. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, this I would personally say is one of their best songs. I would probably agree with that. Um, you haven't mentioned it yet. Mm. Interesting thing is that this year, last minute and a half or so, is completely instrumental. Yeah, which works really well. I think it's an instrumental refrain and then kind of just slowly drifts away. Mm. I mean, after the last album, having two instrumental pieces, they did you know, got a pretty good grasp on how to make an instrumental part. Yeah. So, like, not many songs, not enough songs really have that kind of element. I mean, even if they do, they quite often don't flip off. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm just puzzling over... Again, Alone With The Sea is a song that's very difficult to pin down in terms of genre. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking that, it's not easy to... Yeah. It's not that easy to pinpoint exactly what it is. I mean, like, yeah, okay, it's, it's got rock elements. 
Mm. I probably love post-pop from there, but I don't really see alternative as a genre, so that's what you count. Yeah. But anyway, um, we seem to be in agreement that it's one of their best songs. It is. So, I, th- I think we've kind of talked this song to death a bit. So. Yeah, I think it was the first song you both heard, wasn't it? And you sent it to me first. Uh, it was the first song you heard, but this version wasn't the first song you heard. It was the Volume 2 yeah. version. Okay, was volume, two. Um, volume 2 was the first album I heard because it was recommended by uh, the guy who introduced it to me. Makes sense. Um, but yeah. Um, omission. I don't know what to make of this song. As I say in my notes, it's okay. It just doesn't do anything particularly interesting. It's just a guy with an acoustic guitar singing about girls. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it does have deeper meaning. It's, that's not telling me a bit unfair to say that. But it's just nothing about it really grabs my attention. Oh dear God! This is the moment where you read through the lyrics and you suddenly realise there's something... Yeah, it's way deeper than that. Yeah. But it just, it doesn't enough musically to actually make me yeah. much more sensitive to it. Yeah, um, this is where we have to separate the music from the lyrics, because musically it's uh, much of a muchness. You, uh, I will admit, if I was listening through the album, I would just skip it. it yeah, I'd probably do the same. Yeah, It has some of the less well-regarded new metal elements. It's not a new metal ballad, I guess. Yeah. Musically, at least. Yeah. It's like, what? So, musically, we've already discussed that. We can just go... It's a bit meh. Nah. Guy plays acoustic guitar, not much else happens. Yeah. Lyrically, however, this is why I was saying, oh my god. <laughs> For crying out loud, it's the girl next door lying there naked on the bathroom floor. Because of you, she left the room. <laughs> and how about parents in the nursery homes? Every third Sunday, they get clean robes. It's no excuse to leave the room. There's a bastard child in the parking lot. You could have told someone, but you'd rather not. Because what's the use? They'd just blame you. So it basically seems like a cycle of abuse and... Yeah, it seems to be about abuse. What sort of makes you think it's about abuse, but someone sees this abuse, but they don't want to report it because they're worried that if you know, you'll get dragged into it and you'll be blamed for it. Yeah. Well, abuse, uh, people standing by, and also abandonment. Yeah. The chorus going, you did nothing wrong, you did nothing at all. No, it's not your fault if you did nothing at all. It pretty much does seem to be about, I mean, there's, there might be another reason, but it seems obvious to me that it pretty much is about, you know, someone seeing something horrifying and not giving up the courage for it to do anything about it. Yeah. And not much to really say about this one. As we say, it's much of a muchness. And... It's a pity that there are such interesting lyrics and not much of interest in musically. Yeah. And the... The problem is, if there's not much musically, then the lyrics do fall a bit flat. Hmm. Yeah, I was saying a bit more discordant, maybe it would grab my attention more. Yeah. Because, I mean, the music itself sounds a bit too kind of happy and poppy compared to the lyrics, which are completely the opposite. Of yeah. And happy and poppy for Hurt. Yeah, even for Hurt standards, it is very much like, it's like, what? Yeah. Um, so might as well go on to the next one, which actually directly flows from a mission. Just a title track. Yeah. The consummation, yeah, it feels like an experiment in different sounds. It does. It does actually make me think a bit of post rock. Mm. Some other ones. It's more kind of you know constant guitar sound wave, sound wave, um, soundscape. So you've nothing mm. going on there. Well, I mean, I'm not sure what constitutes for post metal because that genre term really confuses the fuck out of me. It doesn't make any sense, yeah. but. It's just basically it's more like a soundscape elements where you don't even hear like individual notes or whatever, it's just a constant wave of sound. Yeah. But I mean it's it feels like there's sort of it's underlying new metal but elements of prog rock have been treated mm, upon there's it. There's prog rock in there as well. Yeah. In prog rock and post rock are quite often similar mm. structuring at least. Yeah. Um all noodly passages, ambient passages, climaxes, stuff like that. Yeah. The lyrics are a bit strange. Uh, bend over, I seem to love you now. Oh, we've been over this far too long to argue about these little things I've done. So get over it, and I'm done here and now. Learn to shoulder it. Honestly, with that kind of opening, it makes me think it might be the same topic as the previous song from a different perspective. Hmm. What? From the... Actually, it does feel like it could be the perspective of the abuser. Yeah, since, you know follows directly on with no break or anything. They flow into each other directly. With this cold shoulder, I seem to taunt you, although 
we've been over this far too long to argue about these little things I've done here and now but you'll get over it when I've won you will know to get over it yeah this sounds like it could have been written at from the perspective of the abuser and not in a sort of you know forgive the abuser or anything like that no he knows how much of a shitlord he is yeah <laughs> I mean and you you hate me I hate me too you hate me I hate me too hate gives me hate in you because you hate me so I do too hate is me hate is you if you hate me I hate me too I'll hate you so long and now I'm just thinking hate times eight by psycho stick <laughs> I think hate for late <laughs> that's a good film no, it isn't the film cast this is the music cast mm. yeah Personally, this is probably my second favourite song on the album. Yeah. I just think it has a darker side to it, which is, uh, I really like. Also, musically, it's really quite interesting. Mm. It's just the kind of thing I like. Yeah. Interesting that our two favourite songs from the album come around sort of the middling point. Yeah. Because normally that's where the weak, weaker songs are placed. Quite often. It, it's kind of weird, though. Some albums do that. Kind of either good songs at the end and the start, or all towards the end, all towards the start. Mm. I don't know why it seems to work that way. We occasionally get them in the middle. Mm. Um, I'd say I personally do a sort of ranking of uh, Alone with the Sea and Consummation. I won't bother trying to rank all the songs because <laughs> that's. Mm, opinion, yes. Yeah. But anyway. This is we haven't actually finished it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, next song, Cold Inside. A song that you're probably just trying not to talk about a minute ago because it's just not that good. Oh, well, it's okay. I mean, it. the problem it has is it puts me in mind of Radiohead. And I hate Radiohead. I can see the similarities there. I, mean, I don't mind Radiohead, but I can see why people would think this sounds kind of like Radiohead. Yeah. It just... Once again, like with the mission, the actual music just doesn't catch my attention at all. Yeah, and well, I think it doesn't help being put between the consummation and Velvet Rolls Royce, with which are a lot different to pretty much anything else. It happens. Yeah, like, cold on the inside, in phases my lights die, staring through ardent eyes. I love you, but I lied. That opening verse feels very new metalish. It does. Uh yeah. I'm not really sure what we can say about Cold Inside. Well, when you're opening a line about a song, is it doesn't really sound very interesting. Yeah. There's not really much else that needs to be said. It's just... Ugh. I mean, the lyrics are not... I mean, at least in the mission, the lyrics are interesting. Mm. But in this case, it's kind of musically quite similar. That's yeah. It's not very interesting. But the lyrics just come across a little bit edgy. Yeah. And you're not in the 90s anymore. <laughs> So yeah, skip to the next song because we can't fucking say much. Uh, Velvet Rolls Royce. Oh boy, this is interesting. Hmm? This is interesting. Yeah. Welcome to Satan's Ice Cream Truck. <laughs> There's like different times of reference there. <laughs> uh, well, strapping young lad well, to be specific. It's a different times of project. Not the different, not the different times of project. <laughs> but hey, you different times. Of, you know what I mean. <laughs> Damn it, never tell us. You made that name specifically to do the you. Just don't get a pen yet. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing what Devon Townsend is like, probably. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, it basically sounds like... I, When I very first heard it, it was sort of like, did I mistakenly switch to Danny Elfman? It does sound a lot like Danny Elfman. It, it sounds like I've started watching Desperate Housewives or something. It's basically a combination between Danny Elfman slash Wango Boingo and a bit of Popper Eat Yourself in there as well. Which? Popper Eat Yourself. The metal band. Um. You tell like you haven't heard of them. I <laughs> have. You haven't heard anything or remember anything by them. I, I have. No, I. It's just one of those. Because you said it so fast, my brain was translating. Fair enough. I'm just. Um, sort of. You see the elements of it there. It's more yeah. than the other one than it is. Way. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely love Pop Will Eat itself, but maybe we can do a retrospective on them next. That'd be cool. The problem with that is I have three albums and all of them seem to have tracks that are all three albums. Are all <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> For fuck's sake. Um, but yeah, lyrically... It's an odd song. Yeah. 
But just everything about it, musically, it's really interesting to me because it's so out there. I mean, as compared to anything else in the album, it's probably the least. Uh, what's the one thing of? Down there in the there. Well, it's the least new metal song. Yeah, it's, it's definitely the least new metal. It's the least kind of regular struck song as well. Yeah. Um, so sorry, it's a better word for that. I cannot think of it right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, least standard, maybe. Yeah. On that day you talked to me, I waited so patiently for what you gave when you gave. Said my boy, it's not a toy. That red and velvet steel Rolls Royce. Now I know what it is. Ever since this summer's lost, we never stopped to count the cost of what you did, what you did. I cannot fathom these lyrics. <laughs> it does seem like it's uh, I've listened to something, but I can't tell what it is. Mm. Do you know what it is yet? <laughs> Can you tell what it is yet? It's a bit more always about whatever the bloody hell that is. <laughs> It's the case of it doesn't. I don't. It, obviously, it seems to be kind of a euphemism or some kind of allusion to something. But my stupid dumbass brain can't work out what the thing is. No. Oh. <laughs> Still bestowed to stick to sicking hands. What? <laughs> I feel like there's a typo there. Yeah. A boy would soon become a man. Now I know what it is. Now I know why. Now I know why it is. So. Representative of maturity? Question mark? <laughs> Question mark indeed. Some part of me is thinking it might have something to do with you know, possibly rape. I, know, I can't quite tell. Where do you go where I cannot follow? <laughs> I don't know, I'm, just, I'm trying to interpret these lyrics. I'm sort of just to kind of for what you gave, what you, when you gave, kind of thing. Whatever it is, it's very obtuse about what, you know, explaining exactly what it is. Yeah, I. It's rather disturbing when I. I think it might be the fault of people like Robin Thicke and, you know, when the when the lyrics are, could easily sound like a rape song, we start reading rape into rather obtuse things. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so the song I don't really know what it's getting at. It's I'm interested to know what it's actually supposed to be getting at, but all I can say is I do like it just for how weird it is. Yeah, that's what it's about. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it could be just be, be obtuse for the sheer sake of getting people to talk about it again. Mm. Although again, it's all... the thing with Hurt is it they don't feel like the sort of band who would do that. Mm. They probably said there probably is some meaning went into it. It's just a case of. <laughs> Figuring it out. Whether anyone's supposed to figure it out. Yeah. We've had discussions about Abuse of Sid from the last album, for example. Mm. Uh, or people are trying to work out what that actually means. Yeah. I mean, it could just be about the time that his dad gave him a velvet Rolls Royce. Yeah. But, I don't know, that's a bit... <laughs> <laughs> it does seem like it's there's a deeper meaning there. Yeah. I just can't work out what it is. Mm. Next, Sonambulist. Why did he leave the lyrics for an instrument or something? <laughs> because fuck you! <laughs> yeah, the song is instrumental. <laughs> I wasn't thinking, okay? Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sonambulist. A very appropriately named piece. Yeah, it pretty much sums up some of Yeah. For those who don't know... Sleepwalking. It, it has a very ethereal feel to it. It does. It feels like it's kind of discordant as well. Mm. Kind of it seems like a normal thing, but slightly distorted. Which I guess sleepwalking kind of is. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, regularly walking, except you're actually asleep. Mm. Well, the ethereal feel is emphasised by... The production seems deliberately poorer than it is on the rest of the album. Mm, this is the kind of thing I was getting at with a kind of distorted feel to it. Mm. With, both musically and production wise. Yeah. I mean, the distorted sound kind of gives the feel of like an old gramophone, that mm. sort of thing. Yeah, it does. Back in the 1940s. <laughs> Whatever era it was. Uh, gramophone, you'd be going back more 1920s. Yeah, but you're saying it off to you who's the gramophone? Do you know what a gramophone is, you young hipsters? <laughs> Oh, damn millennials! <laughs> Get off my lawn! Anyway. So, we have an in-depth discussion about the lyrics of this instrumental song. 
You're not going to let, let that go, are you? <laughs> oh, let it go. I've got enough of the video. Um, yeah, there's not really much to talk about when it's an instrumental. Too many instrumental interlude. Yeah. We're, we're, on the other hand, the weird thing is it instrumentally interlude that you know, flows directly into a live performance. Yeah, that... <laughs> right, the next song, the I old... I can't help but wonder whether the live performance is actually in his dream or something. That's how it flows in. Possibly. Because it, it does... If it's listening, it does flow directly from Slambler straight into the thing. Yeah. There's no break there, I don't think. Yeah. The next song, The Old Mission, it, it's very weird because it's recorded as a live track, which... That does cause some disconnect, but I think that's that's deliberate. You know, they deliberately did that so that you had this weird unease. Yeah, because it does kind of just come in. It's like, it doesn't you know, advertise it as a, as a live track. For some there isn't a non-live version of it. Mm. So it's an intentional kind of effect. Yeah. And it's jarring, but if this makes sense, it's a good kind of jarring. Yeah. It's sort of like a, wait, what? <laughs> well, okay, then. Um, so what do you want to end on, actually? Yeah. It, it, I mean, again, it's definitely not a new metal track. No, not even close. Yeah. Uh, it... it it feels much more like a country song. Like a third. Yeah. But not country like we've got nowadays with Lady Antebellum and, um, oh. Not stereotypical, oh, you're back in my truck and then go on and get some harvest yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, or Florida Georgia Line. Oh, God, those <laughs> fuckers. <laughs> I hate that band. Um, no, it's much more sort of Johnny Cash or Mark Colley, that sort of vein, where it's very dark lyrics. Well, not dark dark but it's not happy go lucky um she visits the place that the tour groups must have she's shocked to find somebody there with a sun beaten face and a silver gray bit silver gray head he knelt on the floor unaware silver beard <laughs> <Good enough. laughs> i blame avantasia for that misread Fair enough. um he said i'm sorry madame as he lent her his hand, I know I must be a strange sight, but I've been coming here for some thirty odd years, ever since my sweet lady died. But I sure am glad you listened, oh I sure am glad you came. I've been waiting here in this mission ever since that day. Well look at these lyrics and the fact it's a live performance that came out of an ambulance, it does make me think it's now someone's telling a story again. Yeah. Tell a story of days gone by. Hmm. This is where we get into a disconnect within the album itself because certain songs feel like they're connected and then others feel like they're just on there as, you know, general whatever. Regular standalone pieces. Yeah, so it's quite confusing, the general flow of this album. There's no particular theme throughout the entire album, it seems. Mm. Which, in some ways, is to a benefit, other ways, isn't. Yeah. So. Um, Really not sure what to make of this song. Um, I like it, by the way. Uh, it's an odd closer. Yeah. She said, Darling, believe, don't you recognise me, though you waited here all of this time. They had shipped me away to my family in Spain. We can get on with our lives. We still have plenty of time. Whereas the previous album ended with a sort of resolution of my life is better without this person. This seems like a resolution of we've come to terms with our own personal demons mm. and we've come back together. In a kind of weird way at the same time. Mm. It's just a kind of, you know, there's been an absence for years and they come back and they realise that after yeah, everything's not too bad. Mm. So, I, it does kind of work. I think lyrically it works more than anything than musically. Musically it seems kind of out of place in general. Yeah. It's odd. But it, I like mean, it, but it does seem yeah, it's, fit that well. Yeah, it's like um, Velvet Rolls Royce, it's very out of place. Well, as I said earlier on, this case of the first part is very much new method, and the second half seems very experimental with where it's going, yeah. it's trying out different styles and stuff. Yeah. I've got no problem with them experimenting with sound, because no. that's how bands evolve. Um, but yeah, overall, really enjoy the song. It's just a very peculiar placing. Yeah. I wonder if there's any particular idea and reason behind it being a live thing. Hmm. I don't know if there's any actual... Well, it probably is a, a reason behind it. Yeah. I, I, 
I think the idea is that the audience is in his head. Possibly, yeah. It has validity because, as you say, it's going from some somnambulist and the way it's framed is it's almost like somnambulist is actually um you know how some bands will have instrumentals just before they come on the stage yeah it feels like that Happened last night. <laughs> hmm? Happened last night. yeah oh That's I've, quite common. I've had a lot of bands do that i mean okay. metallica pretty much every live show they do they open with ecstasy of gold mm. well, a lot of bands do it Mm. I think Carrie did it, Calvin did it, Cut of Luna Vanek Booth Thunders did it, I think Ice did it as well. Yeah, um, Rock probably did as well. Yeah. Although opening things from the new album. Yeah. Quite nearest four years now, but still. Yeah. <laughs> Cradle of Filth does it, um I'm pretty sure Shinedown did it. I think a lot of bands do. There's a kind of case of they can do that whilst they uh, do the final setup stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Making sure the instruments aren't going to break. Yeah. Uh, well, like if they've got like a kind of backing track they can play whilst they get on stage as well. Yeah. They can join in with the instruments while they're actually on the stage. So mm-hmm. they kind of start to have an instrumental and a backing track and a keyboard or something and then the instruments that come in, yeah. they, they walk in and they pick up the instruments and they go into the main part of it when they play. Yeah. Um, Sabaton pretty much always has, before they come on the stage, the final countdown. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, that's it for the album. Uh, don't know about bonus tracks. Mm, don't know of any. Yeah. So, we will do at some point some sort of retrospective on bonus tracks on albums or something like that. But for now, that's the album. So, might as well sign off. Uh, it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. <laughs>